Hi, I'm Doug Menon, professor of clinical psychology at Teachers College, Columbia University, and director of the Regulation of, of Emotion and Anxiety and Depression Lab. What's most excited me is trying to understand chronic anxiety and mood disorders uh, and using a perspective uh, where we try to understand people's emotional experiences, how they respond to those experiences, and how they manage and regulate them. We've actually had a lot of advances in understanding and treating anxiety and depression, particularly from a behavioral perspective, uh, cognitive behavioral treatments. Over the past 20, 30 years, we've done a lot in, under in understanding and, and, and being able to really advance uh, our knowledge of these conditions and, and help people get better. But there are some uh, individuals that have, still have a really hard time, uh, and particularly some types of anxiety and depression. Um, in particular, when, when anxiety and depression arise often in the individual, when, when the individual is very distressed and, and there doesn't have to be an external problem, we think, well, that anxiety or that, that sadness, that's, that's understandable given that person's life. But many people have those kind of experiences without necessarily having a stressor or uh, they, they have a stressor and they do okay. Uh, so it's not always di a direct relationship between what the stressor is and the way people respond. And even when someone has a difficult event, like uh, a, a loved one who has a, a disease or a trauma, people respond differently. And some people respond and, and get very much up in their heads. Um, and that we often talk about as, we talk about as distress. And you know, the idea of, of getting in our minds is, is an essential part of being human. It's a uh, it's one of the things that makes that makes us human and makes us effective as as organisms. The ability to get up in our uh, in our minds, think about the things that have gone wrong in the past, think about the things that that we want to go right, think about ourselves as if we were a fly on the wall. This self consciousness is an essential part of being human, but it's also a source of a lot of misery. Um, in fact, the Balzac said that uh, uh, most of our miseries lie in anticipation. Uh, and I, I, I always joke that I learned about that, that quote watching the show Mad Men, but I think it speaks to its ubiqu ubiquity, uh, that we all experience that, where we get in our heads. What interested me most about, about these types of thinking uh, is that we learn that there's, they're purposeful. You know, when people get, get worried or ruminate or criticize themselves, they're doing it for a reason, for a purpose. And I was very inspired by the work of James Gross, of Tom Borkovic, Michelle Newman, who looked at this kind of thought process and realized that there was a purpose to it. He was responding to uh, the vicissitudes of our lives. In life, we're, we're constantly uh, uh, hit with, with scenarios and situations, real or imagined, that make us want to protect ourselves or go after something exciting. And that's the basic human conflict is how can we advance ourselves and, and, and still be safe. What we know is that some people manage that experience by getting up in their heads and trying to control it. And when people worry, when they ruminate, when they criticize themselves, it's not a pleasant experience to have, but it gives people a little bit of a sense of control. And unfortunately, what happens is that that sense of control, they, that way of thinking gets reinforced and it changes uh, the way they are in the world. And the world looks different. It looks scarier, it looks sadder, it looks less hopeful. So in our work, we've been really interested in getting into moments uh, and advancing our, our way of understanding anxiety and depression when there aren't clear external components that we can latch on to. When, when an individual is suffering in this way, uh, we want to get into, the, into moments and understand the cascade in their mind understand the ways that they're, they're, they're getting motivated by uh, something real or imagined, the way they're responding by getting uh, self-conscious and getting self-critical or worrying or ruminating, and then what are the consequences of those things. And one of the things we've done is develop a, 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 a focused treatment, a, a, a psychotherapy, a behavioral therapy, but one that's, that's targeted to the components of what we think is going on when somebody's in this state of mind. And so we examine uh, the ways that, that people attend to their experience and try to increase a sense of pliancy and, and flexibility, uh, the ways that people take perspective on their mind uh, and be able to see themselves and see, what's, see the ways that they're responding and gain distance from that, uh, and the ways they're engaging reward when there's risk. 
And each of these components we've worked on honing uh, through a psychotherapy, but a, one that's more targeted and allows for a, a, a more focal relationship with what we think is the basic process that's going on. So we actually examine uh, different behavioral and biological mechanisms, and we try to see if we're improving specified tasks related to that component of the therapy. Uh, and, and, and whether we can, uh, we can see uh, both behavior and brain change, or whether that predicts uh, uh, whether people are getting better. And the idea is to try to hone uh, therapy and, and uh, have it be more precise uh, and uh, improve the lives of people suffering with these conditions.